Sondheim is, is complicated and complex, and it's hard enough to convey emotions through spoken dialogue as it is, right? But when you add Sondheim's music and lyrics to the process, how, how do you begin to tackle that? I think, I think we tried to see the songs as just extensions of the scene. You know, that the songs are, emotion, are as emotionally complex as the scene that's just come before, them, sometimes more so. And so instead of trying to concern ourselves with it sounding pretty, you really don't have time for that. You're just trying to make sense of it and, and make all the thoughts just come alive and explore the magic of it. I mean, the music is so stunning, but it's also emotionally so really profound. And um, so I, I, I feel like I focused more on that rather than how it sounded. Yeah, I think so. I think the songs, there's such a, you know, the, the, the beauty of the show is that the songs are, they're always driving the story. They're, they're never sort of just functional songs for for a song's sake. They're always mm. there driving the story, driving the characters forward. And I it think makes the audience sit forward rather than yeah. relax. They sort of arrest you in that yeah. way, these songs. And I think the way that Rob has directed the film is there is very, very, very few moments where anyone is ever just sort of standing still singing. It's always on the move. It's always vibrant. There's always a an energy to it and, mm. and, and that as an actor when you, you know it interwoves the text and the songs it, it never really feels like oh and now we sing you know right. and, and it, it's sort of um, one of Sondheim's most poignant works I think most people would say and one which deals with a lot of issues that are certainly still relevant today because um, there's always a giant of some kind in the world that humanity needs to band together to fight. Can you talk about that aspect of it? Well, I think that that is incredibly true. I think that thematically there are many profound thoughts running through it, but the main one being that no one is alone and that you're never ever alone going through these incredibly difficult times. And there's always gonna be someone who'll be there to hold your hand through it. And even when you think you're on your own and that nobody else understands, um, that someone will be there and I, found that so moving about it. And I know Meryl talked about it before that when she showed the film to her daughter, her daughter was talking about how after the woods were destroyed and there was debris in the air, that it reminded her daughter of 9-11. And so that's, that's amazing, you know, that these kids are growing up in a more complicated world. It is not what the world used to be. You know, there are giants in our midst all the time in many different forms. Right. Well said, and she, she told me that story, and I got mm. chills when, yeah. she, when she said that, because you're right, we growing up wouldn't have had that same experience, for sure. Um, the, the first act is about wish fulfillment, and the second act is about the effect that the characters' wishes have on each other. Can you explain how that relates to the baker and his wife? Well, I think the baker and his wife, probably the baker more reluctantly so, have done morally quite questionable things to these fairy tale characters in order to get what they want. Yeah. They've probably been the most uh, determined in that way and probably the cruelest in some ways to get what they wish. And so in the second act, I think they, more than any of the other characters, suffer the ramifications of that. And so you see them go from being this quite comedic force, the two of them together, and, and you kind of love seeing them on their rather immoral plight yeah. to get what they want. And then yeah. in the second act, you see a complete, you see that turn on its head and they really. have to deal with, with what they've done. Mm. And, the, and there is and, and the, the the adjustment of that and the the, the, the feeling of uh, of isolation in those moments of you know it's such a it's such a beautifully written dynamic between these two characters in the middle that I think that you know anyone who's in a marriage a long relationship will see and associate with those those feelings and and uh, it's sort of you know, the, the the wanting of a child, having a child, it's not the very thing that you wanted, the, the thought that it would be, and, 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 and all of those things make it so complex in something that is so sort of Universal, fantasy yeah. and epic, you know? Mm -hmm. Into the Woods is sort of unique in this day and age and that, you know, for a film of such size and scope shot on sound stages and in, um, you know, in, in on location, with practical sets rather than CG or green screen. Mm. Did, did that help working in these fantastic oh, environments? Oh, it always Absolutely. helps. You love yeah. working with green screen. It's appalling working with green screen. I hate it. And you well, know, you, got... no, you would wish we had a green screen for the cow. <laughs> That's I wish the we only had a green time. screen cow. Yeah. Would have been great. Rob Marshall would have loved what it. What price an animatronic cow when the cow 
just will not stand still. The cow's trying to sabotage just, every single middle. take. You're, you know, you're watching Meryl Streep give this unbelievable performance and it's just interrupted by... Mm, and just oh, everyone oh, yeah. moving out of the way. Trying not it's, to uh, get trampled on. So yes, in every aspect of the film, it was perfect to be... You know, because we shot in, in real woods and then we would come back and shoot on the soundstage and then it was only the cow you wish more than anything that we could just draw that in. <laughs> That's great. Um, finally, the film is obviously in, in, incredibly entertaining and full of wit, but it also has important themes like the, the parent-child relationship. Can you talk about that and, and sort of what you hope audiences will take away? When well, I think, the it's, I, I think it is so meaningful for so many people parents for anyone who's ever had a child because it's your deepest fear is to fall short being a parent it's what you all we all worry about you know can I how can I serve this little thing I created best you know and so I think it is a cautionary tale for parents you know and I love the end line of careful the things you wish wishes are children yeah it just gives me chills you know and children will listen and children careful will the listen things, careful, careful things, things you, say. you say children will listen and learn and hear and that is there is no greater message you could put in a film I don't think than that which is we really have a duty to protect these little people who are the only people that are going to uh, protect, dare I say, save the planet.